Two suspects accused in the recent Little Rock River market robberies appeared in court this morning. The vacant structures are scheduled to come down in the next few days. Hey, got clutter? If so, we have a New Year's resolution for your junk and mine too. <laughs> Saline County is showing growth with its market value, holding a strong appreciation. And that's exactly what buyers and sellers want to hear. Right now, I am in a medium-sized in-ground fiberglass storm shelter. A legislative push hopes to make a huge difference on this issue here in Arkansas. A new poll on both sides of the presidential race in Iowa shows a dead heat among Democrats John Edwards, Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama. And it's a big shakeup among Republicans. Some might say it's the proof of neckizing in Iowa, as a man that was leading the top spot among Iowa voters has fallen dramatically. Mitt Romney now leads with 27 percent, while Arkansas's own Mike Huckabee falls to 23 percent. Fred Thompson with 14 percent. John McCain is at 13 percent. Rudy Giuliani and Ron Paul are both tied with 5 percent. In our top story tonight, the Iowa caucuses are Thursday. And on Meet the Press today, where the poll results were first released, Huckabee blamed his slide on negative campaigning, while Obama said it speaks to the change voters are eager for. As things began to shake up in the race for the White House, we want to remind you our own Bob Clausen will have our complete coverage of the Iowa caucuses starting January the 2nd and 3rd. We will have live reports on both of those days. Meanwhile, local supporters of Republican presidential candidate Texas Congressman Ron Paul were spreading their message today at the Little Rock Fairgrounds. Paul supporters say their candidate is the only Republican running for president who can adequately protect their rights to freedom. For more information on the race for the White House, go to ArkansasMatters.com. In other news now, more than 24 hours after at least 50 bullets ripped through the walls of a Little Rock home, police are still looking for any help that they can find to get the shooters off the streets. Authorities say the six-year-old that was gravely injured in this shooting is still alive tonight, but things are not looking up for her survival at all. KRK4's Jonathan Wilson joins us live from Little Rock City Hall with the very latest on this ongoing story. Another scare at the Exora Arms Apartments this just three days after an explosion at the complex. There's new information information tonight. Residents in Building F were evacuated around midnight after reports of a gas odor in the building. Little Rock Fire, Hazmat and Centerpoint gas crews tested the air but determined there was no leak. Residents were told to return to their apartments but some are still worried about their safety. No one was killed in Thursday night's explosion at the complex but the American Red Cross tells us this weekend they're assisting 18 families with food, clothing and shelter. Colder temperatures are heading our way, and now is a good time to remind folks of the dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning and why detectors are so very important. Some time. And fire officials have these reminders for avoiding carbon monoxide poisoning. Make sure your gas pilot lights stay on. Open your garage door to warm up your car. If the electricity goes out, keep your generators outside and install carbon monoxide detectors according to package instructions. A local teacher is taking the fight to the next level, spreading the word on a popular teenage network. More on her story coming up. Getting a colonoscopy is something many women put off until they're 50. So it can be a shock for a woman in her 40s to find out that she has colon cancer. Because Health Matters, a North Little Rock High School teacher is spreading the word about her fight against colorectal cancer. Terry Valentine is on the popular networking site Facebook. She has organized a group of members, including some of her students. And so far, she's gotten a good bill of health despite the cancer. Right, and not bad, and it's a good night to watch football. It's a good night for watch football. And then the tornado, we heard it coming. It sounded like a train coming. The house started shaking real bad and everything. How does it feel to be, you know, alive in the middle of all of this destruction? We feel fortunate to walk right. out without any scratches on us and material things can be replaced. The couple survived by squeezing into their shower, praying and holding on to this symbol of faith in the midst of the storm. So, Kathy, um, what went through your mind when this happened? Did you even think you would praying. survive this? I was praying, so yeah. <laughs> you both were praying. Good Lord took care of us. I carry my pocket cross, and she was praying. Yeah. Yeah. Friends and neighbors tackled through twisted metal, uprooted trees, downed power lines, and scattered debris, helping the Martins salvage what they can. Love y'all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
It's just so wonderful to have so many friends. All that's left now is to pick up the pieces and begin to move on with their lives. We've lived here 21 years, and this is the first tornado that hits the limits of Mountain View, as far as I know. In Stone County, Kim Benton, KARK 4 News. Jancy, this boarded up vacant home just behind me is an eyesore and attracting much crime in the area, according to administrators here. But change is coming, and it's all a part of the president's five year, $20 million initiative to revitalize the institution. By day, neighboring streets surrounding Arkansas Baptist College are calm and quiet. But by night, administrators say these two vacant homes, literally in the college's backyard, are magnets for prostitution, drugs, and other crime. People running around the back of the school property, shooting, raping, whatever it was that they wanted to do. That's why the college recently purchased the dilapidated homes to soon tear them down in order to take back their streets. Yeah, Taking back the neighborhood basically empowers the folks in the neighborhood to be a part of it and to be a value to the neighborhood. And what's been missing before has been us. Trees and brush you see here near the houses will be cut down and lighting will be improved for safety. And there's more. The HBCU recently purchased this car wash at MLK and Wright Avenue to renovate and incorporate in its business school program. Students will run the facility while learning business strategy. And fundraising efforts are going strong to revamp the historic Old Main Building. Administrators believe after years of struggling to keep these doors open, the future for this private institution is powerful. But when you look at where we were two years ago, with 150 students here, when Dr. Hill first got here, we're 612 moving forward. Meanwhile, the vacant structures are scheduled to come down in the next few days. There's more good news. Arkansas Baptist College come fall 2008 will unveil its brand new marching band. So a lot of good things going on here. From the River Market to North Little Rock and back, Central Arkansas's transit's trolley system extends to the Clinton Library and Heifer International. Second and Main. Driver Bill Dean cruises the River Market near the new route. It takes about 15 minutes. Most times he's alone or averaging only about five passengers every hour. This is really normal for this time of year. Of course, it'll pick up even more with the opening of the Clinton Presidential Library run. But in the wake of growth, just how is the trolley system faring? If you happen to pass by a trolley and you notice there are hardly any people on board, in fact, I'm the only one on here right now, officials say there are no worries and no financial woes because they already factor in low ridership during the winter months. Actually, ridership, our first year, full year of operation in 2005, exceeded expectations. It met expectations in 2006, and with the opening of the extension, we expect to have another 2,000 average, another 2,000 riders a month. The average annual operational cost is about $770,000. That's compared to about 600000 in 2004 when this system began rolling in Little Rock. Expenses are covered by the city of North Little Rock, Little Rock, Pulaski County, local contributions and rider fees. They rode the cars a lot. Retired cat operations manager Tommy DeVore says trolleys here here date back to the 1800s when business was booming, he sees a major comeback with downtown development. Really, the booming part was in the 40s when the World War II was going because they, most cities were beginning to do away with the cars. Meanwhile, for Dean, regardless of a slow day on the job, this daily duty is quite rewarding. I enjoy driving, even when we don't have passengers. It's kind of fun. In Little Rock, Kim Benton, KARK 4 News.